I'm Aditi Singh and you're tuned in to My India. India's economic surge has fueled exponential growth in the consumer electronics market as demand skyrockets for smart home gadgets. And this unprecedented expansion is propelled by rising disposable incomes, technological advancements and a burgeoning middle class firmly establishing India's prominence in the global electronics arena. Stay tuned for our comprehensive report. From smartphones to smart appliances, consumer electronics are reshaping daily life in India, fueling demand and innovation. In the capital, New Delhi, we meet the Aurora family, who prioritize convenience and efficiency. Simi Aurora, a housewife, relies on modern appliances to streamline household tasks, saving valuable time. Meanwhile, her son Samir, who works from home, seamlessly transitions between his laptop and mobile phone to stay connected with colleagues throughout the day. उससे बेटा हमारी लाइफ बहुत इजी हो गई है जैसे फ्रिज में चीजें रखते हैं तो खराब होने का डर नहीं रहता सुबह से शाम तक यूज कर सकते हैं हम लोग और वॉशिंग मशीन्स हैं जो हमारी वो मतलब पहले आंटी को जैसे टेंशन रहती आज कपड़े धोने आज कपड़े धोने बट उसमें डालो और काम झटपट तो हो जाता है तो हम काम वो डाल के उसमें और आराम से दूसरा काम कर सकते हैं Consumer electronics demand in India's Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities is also on the rise due to increasing disposable incomes, improved infrastructure, and the penetration of e-commerce platforms. Residents in these cities are increasingly able to afford smartphones, TVs, laptops, and home appliances. The availability of digital services and aspirational consumption patterns also contribute to this trend. In today's hyper-connected era, Consumers expect electronic gadgets to seamlessly blend innovation with reliability. A significant majority of consumers rely on online reviews before making purchasing decisions, underscoring the paramount importance of product quality. This indicates that modern consumers in India now prioritize reliability, performance, and user experience when choosing electronic devices. इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स के बिना जो भी कंज्यूमर गुड्स हैं टीवी एसी फ्रिज हो गया आर हो गया तो ये नेसेसिटी बन गए हैं बेसिक नेसेसिटी लाइफ की क्योंकि बिना इसके सरवाइव करना मुश्किल है आज के टाइम में हम इतने यूज टू हो गए हैं इन सारी चीज़ों के खाना ठंडा चाहिए तो फ्रिज चाहिए माइक्रोवेव चाहिए गर्म करने के लिए तो दीज आर द मैंडेटरी थिंग्स एंड आई बिलीव कि जितना जल्दी टेक्नोलॉजी इन्हेंस हो रही है नए नए प्रोडक्ट्स आ रहे हैं तो काफ़ी हेल्पफुल है Government initiatives such as Digital India and Make in India further support the growth of the sector. And this expanding market presents a significant opportunities for companies aiming to tap into the burgeoning consumer electronics demand in India's smaller urban centers. As India's consumer electronics and appliance industry is predicted to become the fifth largest in the world by 2025, A report from the India Brand Equity Foundation also suggests that the market will grow by 2.3 billion USD between 2022 and 2027. The surge in demand for consumer durables has given a boost to electronics manufacturing companies in India as well. Buoyed by this growth, Videotex, an Indian LED TV manufacturer, has invested 12 million USD to manufacture 1.8 million TV sets per year. The company has emerged as one of the largest manufacturers of web OS hub TVs, capturing a market share of over 85%. The opportunities are very vast, but at the same time, uh, you know, we are into manufacturing, we understand the product and we also understand the cost effectiveness of that. and in india we are working continuously towards enhancing uh, the quality of the products as well as provide the best products to our customers we are meeting up with the make in india initiative that is being promoted in india by the government at a smartwatch launch in new delhi 
Lava International Limited, an Indian multinational technology company, emphasized its Make in India initiative. The company's chief stressed empowering individuals with seamless technology experiences and praised the government's efforts in fostering local manufacturing, with large companies now producing mobile phones and other electronic products in India. In technology, I would say that the journey has just begun. Uh, because one of the challenges that this industry had was that we did not have an ecosystem in India. Ecosystem has always been outside of India. Now, with the, uh, with the government interventions, some of the uh, schemes that have been rolled out, uh, they are enabling the ecosystem creation in India. For example, some of the large companies in electronics have come into India and have started uh, manufacturing in India. The Indian government is incentivizing electronics consumer manufacturers through initiatives like Make in India, the Production Linked Incentive Scheme PLI, and Electronics Manufacturing Clusters EMCs. These efforts aim to bolster domestic production, attract investment, and foster technological advancement in the electronics sector. India is indeed an agrarian economy where women farmers play a significant role. They have been actively adopting modern techniques to bring about transformation in the agricultural sector. And to empower these progressive women farmers with the latest technology, the Indian government has been providing free agricultural drones. And these drones assist them in various tasks such as efficient field planning, soil and field analysis, as well as pesticide and seed spraying. India's journey of development is evident through various government schemes impacting people's lives. The Namo Drone Didi scheme is a shining example of this progress. Drone Didi is a tribute to the Hindi term for elder sister, and the initiative involves the deployment of unmanned aerial vehicles with advanced surveillance systems that combine community engagement and technology. Under this scheme, rural women are provided with drones and trained to operate them for agricultural purposes. Take the case of Sita Devi from Haryana's Kotlahuri village, who now operates a drone to spray pesticides in her fields, enhancing both efficiency and income for her family. Sita Devi, a beneficiary of the scheme, explained how it has transformed her life, providing additional income and contributing to household expenses. लाइफ में चेंज ही जाए सर जैसे मैं घर का काम करने के बाद अपना बाहर निकली और ड्रोन से स्प्रे करने किया और मैंने मेरी आमदनी बढ़ी और मैं अपने घर का खर्च भी और अपने घर का कंट्रोल अब मेरे हाथ में सरकार की तरफ से सर मेरे को ये एक ईवी मिला है इलेक्ट्रिक ईवी ड्रोन मिला है उसमें बैटरी सेट वगैरह सब भी है और जैसे हम खेतों में स्प्रे करने के लिए जाते हैं तो इसमें भी हमें सरकार की तरफ से कुछ पैसा मिलता है जिसमें सरकार का भी किसानों का भी फायदा हो रहा हमारा भी फायदा Mandeep Korpanu from Punjab's Burundi village is another beneficiary who has undergone training and now operates a drone for farming purposes. Her positive experience highlights the effectiveness of the scheme in empowering women and promoting modern agricultural practices. Mandeep Korpanu shares her training experience and the benefits she has gained from the scheme. I went to November in the training in Manisar, Delhi. I was training for 15 days in December. वहाँ पर उन्होंने पहले हमें थ्योरी सिखाई तो फिर सिमुलेटर पर फंक्शन वगैरह उसको कैसे कंट्रोल करते हैं वो सिखाया तो फिर हमें ग्राउंड में लेके गए ड्रोन फ्लाई करना सिखाया फिर हमारे टेस्ट भी हुए जैसे थ्योरी हमने दो दिन सीखी और तीसरे दिन हमारा टेस्ट हुआ फिर उन्होंने हमें दस दिन पढ़ाया फिर हमारा टेस्ट हुआ फिर आयोटिक वाले एग्री वाले आए उन्होंने पाँच दिन की हमें ट्रेनिंग दी तो फिर लास्ट में उनका टेस्ट था वहाँ का एक्सपीरियंस मेरा बहुत अच्छा रहा क्योंकि मैं अलग अलग जगह से लोग आए थे उनसे मिली द नामो ड्रोन डी डी स्कीम एम्स टू प्रोवाइड ड्रोन टू फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड वेमेन सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप अक्रॉस इंडिया प्रमोटिंग वेमेन्स एम्पावरमेंट एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसमेंट इन एग्रीकल्चर लॉन्च बाय प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी द स्कीम एम्फोसाइज सेल्फ रिलायंस and additional income generation for women. 
सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स के माध्यम से बहनों को आत्मनिर्भर बनाने का जो अभियान चल रहा है वो भी ड्रोन ईजा से सशक्त होगा इससे बहनों बेटियों को कमाई का अतिरिक्त साधन मिलेगा The scheme also includes the establishment of training centers to equip women with the necessary knowledge and skills. Dr. Satyendra Yadav from the Horticulture Department highlights the government's commitment to empowering women through the allocation of funds and the formation of self-help groups. This scheme has been the women who have been in the Grameen Chetra, who have been in the Grameen Chetra, so we will also take the main part of the Grameen Chetra. और कृषि के अंदर ड्रोन की वजह से उनकी भागीरथाईता बढ़ेगी। The use of drones in agriculture significantly reduces the time and labor required for tasks like pesticide spraying, leading to increased efficiency and profits for farmers. The initiative demonstrates the government's recognition of the importance of technology in modern farming practices. Indeed, the Namo Drone DD scheme stands as a testament to India's commitment to empowering women and embracing innovation in agriculture. As rural women take flight with drones, they not only transform their own lives, but also contribute to the growth and prosperity of the nation's agricultural sector. Moving on, in a heartwarming initiative by the Indian Army to strengthen national unity and enhance the welfare of soldiers, religious leaders from various faiths are being trained at the Institute of National Integration in Pune, Maharashtra. And in today's episode, we will dive into the spiritual and psychological journey of Indian Army, which is fostering camaraderie within the organization. The armed forces in India, as we all know, have a crucial role in safeguarding the nation's border as well as the national security, though their duty does not accomplish just here. Beyond that, the army today is also serving for the integration and unity of the country. The Institute of National Integration, INI, a unique establishment within the army, is dedicated to fostering national integration and enhancing the well-being of soldiers. The organization trains religious teachers from different faiths who serve with army units and formations across the country. This training institute exposes them to spiritual, philosophical and psychological aspects of religion, mentoring them to the counselors for Indian army soldiers. The INI ingrained in its participants the importance of national unity and respect for all religions. Soldiers are encouraged to fulfill their duties while also promoting harmony among their troops. These dedicated individuals also serve as yoga instructors, philosophical gatekeepers, lifestyle disease mitigators, resource optimization experts and promoters of national integration and religious harmony. I was working with two or three communities, but here I saw that there are Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, and all of them. And the most important thing is that the Rashtri is the work that you are in the actual work. और पहले आप एज ए सोल्जर किसी दूसरे से सीख रहे थे अभी आपने वो सिखाना है तो वो जो चीज़ें हमने यहाँ पे सीखी हैं कि पहले फौजी है फौजी का काम आपने दृढ़ता से करना है साथ में आप एक रिलीजियस टीचर है और आपके पास एक कॉन्सेप्ट है एक मोटिव है कि कैसे आपने अपने ट्रुप्स को आगे लेके बढ़ना है Moreover, the Sarva Dharma Sthal, a unique concept within the Indian Army, serves as a symbol of unity and inclusivity. Here, soldiers from all religious backgrounds come together to offer prayers, emphasizing the ethos of unity in diversity. This initiative fosters a sense of camaraderie and mutual respect among troops. <laughs> Sarva Dharma Sthal. Now, this is a hall in which, let's say, all gods reside, of all faiths and all religions. So that is a place where all of us get together, irrespective of our faith or religion, and pray together. We celebrate our festivals together and partake in each other's festivities without any inhibitions in our mind. 
which is a step towards fostering the camaraderie that is required in the Indian Army. INI became operational in February 1985, offering tailored courses for officers, JCOs and NCOs, including religious teachers. Through tailored courses like these and exposure to India's rich cultural heritage, INI aims to equip its participants with the skills and mindset necessary to promote national integration and religious harmony within the Indian Army. Now, let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. The Asian Development Bank kicked off its annual meeting in Tbilisi, which will focus on issues including climate change, artificial intelligence and green globalization according to a statement by the ADB. The four-day meeting from May 2 to 5 will bring various business leaders, economists and financial leaders to examine development issues in Asia and the Pacific. ADB's Managing Director General Wu Cheng Um said in a statement that the meeting in Tbilisi presents an excellent opportunity to explore the physical, financial and economic connections between Asia and Europe. Microsoft will open its first regional data center in Thailand, the tech giant said on May 1st, as it looks to boost the availability of cloud services. The news comes a day after Chief Executive Satya Nadella announced investments worth $1.7 billion in artificial intelligence and cloud facilities in neighboring Indonesia. The data center was in line with Thailand's aim to become a digital economy hub. Prime Minister Stretha Thaiwisin said, Microsoft has pledged to train 2.5 million people in Southeast Asia in the use of AI by 2025. India's Jammu and Kashmir is renowned for its stunning valleys and peaceful atmosphere. It's a magnet for adventure enthusiasts worldwide, with a range of activities drawing tourists from far and wide. Ongoing efforts to boost tourism are benefiting the local community. Notably, the recent inaugural Formula 4 car race in the Kashmir Valley presented a fantastic opportunity for visitors. So let's delve into how tourism is flourishing in this region. <laughs> The roar of cars speeding along the roads by Dal Lake was a historic moment when the first Formula 4 race was held in Srinagar of India's Jammu and Kashmir. Various types of sports cars not only showcased racing, but also displayed many astonishing feats, much to the delight of visiting tourists. Such events are significant for the Kashmir Valley as they boost local tourism. ये हो रहा है एक यही एक उसके बीच में ही अचीवमेंट है and I hope यहाँ से और talent आए और we can see more people coming in. The beautiful Dal Lake is one of the major tourist centers in Jammu and Kashmir, famous for houseboats and shikara rides. Many tourists even prefer staying on houseboats, which provide all kinds of amenities comparable to royal residences, making the stay experience extremely splendid and memorable. Yes, houseboat extremely extra experience life. When you are sleeping in the night, you are sleeping in the night, you are sleeping in the night, and you are sleeping in the morning. It's like a calm day. Yes, it's a calm day. When you come out in the morning, you can see the sea in the morning, you can see the sea in the morning, you can see the sea. तो लाइक आप मतलब आप उठे हो आपने स्वर्ग में आंख खोली है मतलब ऐसा लगता है फील ऐसे आती है कि लाइक अ हेवन यू आर इन द हेवन जो टूर्स आते हैं वो जो हाउस बोट है उनको होमली फील होता है यहाँ पे क्योंकि खाना भी घर का बनता है 
ये रेस्टोरेंट वाला खाना नहीं बनता है घर वाला खाना बनता है और एक मालिक उसके सामने दिन भर खड़ा रहता है कि उसको किसी चीज़ की ज़रूरत तो नहीं है तो उसकी वजह से हम जो मेहमान नवाजी है तो मेहमान तो हमारे पास ही आती है हम ही तो नवाजते हैं उनको तो इन शाला हमारी कोशिश रहती है हंड्रेड परसेंट कि हम अपनी तरफ से पूरी कोशिश करें कि टूरिस्ट हमारे से न बहुत अच्छी तरीके से यहाँ से जाए The natural beauty of Jammu and Kashmir attracts tourists, while the tulip garden in Srinagar is also a favorite spot for travelers. It is Asia's largest tulip garden, where tourists can see tulips of various types and colors. This garden is opened every year for tourists and is a major attraction for both domestic and international visitors. I don't know how good it is to feel. What people say is that it's a good thing. तो जो आँखों से देखने से वो जन्नती मालूम हो रहा है ये एक ट्यूलिप गार्डन जो ना सर्ग जैसा है बहुत ही सुंदर There are many more beautiful places in Jammu and Kashmir which tourists can explore as well When it snows here the joy of sightseeing doubles and during snowfall various adventure activities attract enthusiasts to the valley Recently when there was snowfall in Gulmarg tourists from around the world enjoyed this winter wonderland to the fullest Gulmarg. It is a picturesque hill station in Jammu and Kashmir, which attracts tourists in droves when the snow begins to fall. The snow-capped mountains and tall trees make this place a paradise during snowfall. During snowfall, the resort town offers various adventure activities, with skiing being the most popular. The gondola ride here is also unique, offering a breathtaking view of the beautiful valleys. With the increasing tourism in Jammu and Kashmir, various sectors, including the hotel industry, local businesses, and transportation, are benefiting. This is strengthening the region's economy and also creating employment opportunities, leading to a changing perception of Jammu and Kashmir. We now take you to Jaipur city in northern India where a remarkable family embodies artistic brilliance. With a mastery of miniature sandalwood carving, they are not only custodians of ancient techniques, but also pioneers in blending tradition with modern sensibilities. Through their creations, they infuse vitality into age-old practices, ensuring that Rajasthan's rich cultural legacy flourishes. Join us in exploring their captivating work. Breathing vitality into lifeless sandalwood with their exquisite craftsmanship. This family in the vibrant city of Jaipur has emerged as true pioneers, elevating the art of sandalwood carving to unprecedented heights of global acclaim. Their mastery in carving has not only earned them numerous awards, but has also garnered admiration both at home and abroad. Across generations, they zealously preserve traditional techniques while fearlessly venturing into innovative realms, pushing the boundaries of their craft. Rohit Jangid, the fourth generation artist, carries the torch of this rich heritage, enchanting audiences with his intricate creations. सैंडलवुड कार्विंग जो आर्ट है ये मेरी परिवार की मतलब फोर्थ जनरेशन है इस काम के अंदर ये काम मेरे परदादा जी श्री मालचंद जी कलाकार ने स्टार्ट किया था तो उनको कहते हैं कि उनको सपना आया था जैसे उन्होंने एक इस काम को जन्म दिया उनको सपना आया था कि सैंडलवुड कार्विंग के अंदर काम का तो फिर उन्होंने ये काम स्टार्ट किया था उस टाइम बिना टूल्स के और मतलब काफ़ी कम आइडिया से in 1971, Rohit's great-grandfather received an honour from the President of India, igniting pride and determination within the family. And this recognition propelled them forward and as a child, Rohit learned woodwork by watching his father and elder brother. These experiences laid the foundation for Rohit's journey into sandalwood carving, shaping his skills and passion for the craft.
The talent of the Jongid family caught the attention of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who presented a sandalwood sitar crafted by them to French President Emmanuel Macron during his visit to France last year. Similarly, during Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's visit to India in 2022, Prime Minister Modi gifted him a Krishna Ponki made by the same family. In 2018, they made headlines by successfully replicating a 500-year-old altarpiece displayed in a British art museum. Their exceptional skill has earned them recognition worldwide, with customers hailing from various corners of the globe. The elder son of the family, Mohit, has also received numerous awards and accolades, showcasing the family's dedication to their craft and their commitment to its preservation and advancement for future generations. When we went to school, we saw family to work with the whole family, we feel that we can do this too. So, there was a lot of interest and as we got to meet the family, we got to meet some customers from the childhood. So, they also advised us to learn how to do this work and how to grow it further. Mahesh Jongan, a recipient of the National Award in 1993, passionately describes how his sons ingeniously leverage technology to safeguard and perpetuate this cherished heritage. We were working at that time, there was no knowledge of the internet, there was no knowledge of the outside, what is happening outside, what is not happening. So, now that the internet came, the internet came, the internet came, the things that were made in the internet, we could see things that were made in the internet. There are some stories that we can tell them. Now, they can see them on the internet, like they can make their own stories, like they can make their own stories, like they can make their own stories, like they can make their own stories. So, there are stories. Our art, as well as our art, is all story-based. So, they can see them on the internet. Mahesh Jongan has also been awarded the The family has been primarily creating pieces in sandalwood though they also utilize other types of wood when necessary or requested, sometimes even to make smaller pieces more affordable. Taking forward traditional art, the Jangid family in Jaipur provides a truly inspirational story, offering a unique perspective to conceptualize ideas. And that's all for today's show, but we will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.